In this lecture, we'll be exploring a nonlinear data structure, and the most common example of a nonlinear data structure is a binary tree. A nonlinear data structure is used to store data in a hierarchical manner. And talking about binary trees, the benefit of this over traditional data structures like arrays and linked lists is that one can search a binary tree very quickly and at the same time one can also insert data and delete data quickly from a binary tree as opposed to an array. Let's first of all understand the definition of a tree. A tree is a set of nodes as you can see from this example. Each node is connected by edges. So here we can see that in binary tree the topmost node is called the root node and every node can have maximum two child nodes as you can see over here node 8 is the root node and it has got two sub nodes or child nodes 3 and 10 and in the example you can also see node 14 is having just one child that's 13 so maximum a node can have two child nodes so a node can have zero one or more nodes connected to it and binary tree as per its name itself restricts it to two nodes per child or to two nodes per node if you want to further analyze it a tree can be broken down into levels let's call it as a root node as a level zero or at level zero and then at level one we have these two child nodes three and ten then at level two we have child nodes 1, 6, and 14, and then at level 3, we have child nodes or nodes 4, 7, and 13. One more way of looking at this binary tree is that we can divide this into left and right portions. If you see from the root node, there are two clear separations nodes appearing on the left side and then nodes appearing on the right side. So for 8, the left child is 3 and right child is 10. Or left node is 3 and right node is 10 and the example that we will be exploring will be binary search tree in which we will be exploring how these left and right nodes play a crucial role a binary search tree is made up of nodes so here as you can see we have a node class and if I explore this you'll find out there are a couple of items or attributes in this class they are data and then left node right node and then we are also having a method called display node which is going to display the data assigned to a given node so now that we have our node defined we'll be not taking a look at how we can create our binary search tree so here's a class called binary search tree and we have a root node so if you take the look at the example that we had this is the root node it that we see over here is the root node the first item in the binary search tree so that will become the root node we have a constructor which initializes a root as null then in order to add items to a binary tree we have this method called insert so what we are doing over here we are sending a value let's say we are sending it to this method as the first value so that will be assigned as root node now let's see how it does that First thing, we have created an instance of the node class. Then, using the data attribute of the node class, we are saying this is the data which this node is going to have. After that, we are checking it if the root node is null. In that case, the new node that we have created becomes the root node. So here we have our root node defined. In case root node was not null, in that case, we would have to look where exactly this particular value will go whether to left or to right so here in this example if you see there are two places where it will go so left is 3 and right is 10 so in case this root node was already defined then it would be further searched where this particular value will be inserted in this scenario let's assume if root node was occupied then we'll have to find whether the left node is available or not and if that is also occupied then we'll have to check about the right node and if it's available the value will be inserted at that position and that's what we are doing over here you can see here we have taken the root node as the current node and then another variable called parent 
has been defined. After that, we are assigning current to the node parent that we have defined over here. And what we are doing, we are checking whether the value i that we have to insert is less than the current data. So if you see 8 was the root node and if let's say 3 is the value that we have to insert, what we'll do is we'll come over here, we'll see 3 is less than 8. That's true. So the lower values are kept on the left side or left edges and the higher values are kept on the right side. So here, if you see 3 is less than 8, in that case, it will go to the left node and current.left becomes the current value. And then again, we check over there if that node is empty or not. If it is, then we make parent.left is equal to new node. So the value 3 will then be inserted on the left hand side. If that's not the case, that is left is already occupied. In that case, we'll go to right. And there also we check whether it's empty or not. If it is empty, then we put that new node as the right node for that particular parent. And that's pretty much it in order to insert a particular node in the binary search tree. Now, there are a couple of ways to traverse the binary tree. Primarily, we have in order, pre order, and post order. If you look closely, in order is something which is going to print the value in ascending order, that is from low to high. So, in that case, you'll notice that we are storing the lower values on the left side and higher values on the right side. So, what it is going to do is it will first of all traverse left nodes and then display the data and then traverse the right node and display the data. So, that way it is going to show it in the ascending order. Then in pre-order, if you see, it is going to traverse left then right. So, currently whatever node position it is on, it will display that and then from there it will traverse left ones and then it will traverse right ones. In that sense, it is going to traverse. The only difference between in order and pre order is that you can see the display is happening prior in the pre order, and here it's kind of sandwiched between left and right traversals. Then we have this post order where first of left nodes will be searched, and then after that, the right ones. And then we display it over here. Apart from this, we have a couple of methods as well to find out the minimum and maximum value present in a binary search tree. And that we basically do using the left node, we have all the minimum values. So we'll just traverse the left nodes to find out the minimum values. And if you have to find out the maximum values, we'll traverse the right node only. So you can see the difference now that we know where exactly the maximum values resides, the minimum value resides. And based on that, we can say that binary search trees are faster because we certainly know where to find certain kind of values, like the maximum ones will reside on the right side. And here we have created one more method called find, which is just going to find a node based on the key that we have provided. So if the key is less than the current data, it becomes the left becomes the current value. And if it is greater than, then the right becomes the current value. And if there's nothing, then we just return null. And if we found something, we are returning that particular node. Now let's go ahead and see all these things in action first. And then in the next lecture, we'll see how to delete nodes from a binary search tree. So here you can see that I have created a small example wherein we are specifically mentioning what values we are trying to insert. And the reason behind this to explicitly mention the values so that we can see how the traversal is working when we print out the results. Now, here the insert method, I have made a few more changes. So I would like to first explain what changes were made and then I'll take you to the demo. So initially what we were doing is like when we were traversing from the root node to left and right in the explanation, I forgot to write some more code to change the current value from root to the left and right ones. For instance, if you take the example over here in program.cs, first of all, we are inserting 23. So this gets inserted as a root node. Then we are trying to insert 45. So 45 will be inserted on the right because it is greater than the root node value 23. After that, we are inserting 16. So when we'll try to insert 16, 16 will go on the left side of the 
root node that is 23. So now we have a root node with 23 and two values 16 and 45. 16 on the left, 45 on the right. After that, when we try to insert 37, 37 will be first compared with the root node. Obviously, 37 is greater than 23, so it will go towards the right. Now, right is already occupied by 45. And that is where I missed out the code to change the current position from root to the next one. So now that here in the code, you can see that we are checking if the value that is being inserted is less than the current data, then we are going to the left basically. And uh, if that's not the case, then we are going to the right. Now, once we are on the left side, at that point, we are making the current dot left as the current. So let's say we are on a 16. 16 becomes the current value or current node. And then if it is already having a value, then it will go and change it from 23 to 16. So here the parent is now 16 and current dot left will point to the left of 16. So if that's null, then we'll insert the value over there. If that's occupied, then we'll go to the right of that node. So that's how it is right now. And uh, let's run this now to see it in action. Over here, you can see in order traversal is actually printing it in ascending order. So 3, 16, 22, 23, 37, 45, and 99 are being printed over there. And in pre order traversal, you have 23, 16, 3, 22, 45, 37, and 99. And then on post order traversal, you have 3, 22, 16, 37, 99, 45, 23. The min value, as you can see, is 3, and max value is 99. Using the find method, we were able to find the node here, 99 dot data. So that also got printed. Now, in the next one, we'll be exploring delete functionality in binary search tree.